Welcome, my friends. We are now finally taking a look at the Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts campaign. You heard me right. The game now has a campaign, guys, and I can't wait to dive in and take a look. Now, as you can see here, um, so far, the initial system for movement seems to be pretty straightforward, where it's just you click this area, you move the ships, but you don't actually get to move in particular areas. I think you just move port to port. Maybe that changes um, as the campaign progresses. So right now, I'm actually not going to move any um, ships from there. I wanted to take a look also at the finances screen, which is really, really cool. It gives you a monthly balance. It also gives you the amount of naval funds that you currently have available, as well as the crew pool. And you can even put government budget into different things. Or So for instance, if you want, you, want, you can go ahead and increase crew training, lower the tech budget a bit. I think I'm going to increase crew training by a few million dollars there. In fact, we'll get it to about 2.6. As you can see, that's going to be reflected in our finances. Now over here, we can actually research different parts of the ships to actually, of course, create and construct better dreadnoughts. Uh, over here, we've got the ship design menu, and this is completely up to you guys. You can hit here a new design where you actually enter the dockyard and design your own ship. But if you prefer to just keep an automated design, um, like for instance, this one right here, that's also just fine. So we're gonna leave the shipyard here. And what I'm gonna try to do is get a nice battle going. Um, right now, as far as I know, the only way to actually get a battle going is to hopefully have the enemy react to one of these movements uh, and, of course, engage them at sea. So let's go ahead. Let's hit that next turn and a full attack. We've got a lot of our ships in the Irish Sea against two enemy battleships. I believe we'll go ahead and take this fight on. Let's jump in, folks, as the glorious English or well, British Navy, I should say. Let's jump in and see if we can't get a victory. All right, a little bit of a different fight. Actually, it's the same exact difference in ships, but it's on a different location here, guys. We've got enemy smoke spotted to the east. We're headed to the north right now. We want to change that completely. Let's just make sure that way, boys. And hopefully, we're going to get a fight with two massive enemy battleships. Now, that might be, um, actually, you know, might sound appealing to us, but I'm not so sure that's going to be a blessing in disguise, because these battleships are certainly going to be prepared for some kick-assery. Let's see what we can do, and of course, as always, in these battles, we'll return when the fighting begins. It begins, boys. We have spotted those ships for sure. We're going to go ahead and start to engage. And act actually, it was the um, Amphitry. Uh, I thought it was the um, the Aphrodite. Unfortunately not. Um, we're going to go ahead, guys, and start targeting with him. We've already got three ships targeting, but all I'm trying to do is kind of change their trajectory uh, so that they get the best broadsides possible here. I also want to start taking these torpedo ships and potentially going ahead steaming towards the enemy. Uh, we do have two light cruisers back here kind of doing their thing, the Perseus and one other, and I'm just going to split them apart and continue the barrage towards the enemy. Let's get that Medusa turning as well. We're not quite in range yet, though, so I'm going to actually push forward with the Medusa, um, and pretty quickly here, fairly soon, let's just grab everybody. Uh, let's go ahead and pop smoke wherever we can. Actually, the Argonaut, as well as this guy, do have torpedoes, which we can use. Um, but the Medusa has some smoke, so should we pop it now? Why not? Let's go for it. Oh boy, enemy warships directly targeting at us. Here we go, boys. Oh, that is awfully close. Right over the port side. Let's push over with the diadem as well. We can actually just directly start pulling over with him here. I believe we have to separate him from this group. Let's detach. really want the diadem doing his own thing here. We're just barely in range of the enemy guns. We've got to get closer, though. We do have to get closer. So with the diadem, as well as with the torpedo bomber and the Medusa here, the light cruiser, I'm going to start actually moving towards the enemy while the two... Ca they're not carriers, I know. Are they just cruisers? You guys are going to have to let me know down below. Um, I'm just going to have them continue firing. In fact, turn a little bit more towards the enemy here so that we get proper shots. I'll just keep the Argonaut right on the same trajectory here. And let's make sure we're using armor piercing. 
Here we go. That's what I like to see, boys. This is the very beginning of the war, guys. Keep that in mind. So our, we don't have these massive, you know, Goliath guns uh, that we do in, um, in the tutorial parts of this game. We're really just working with the very first ships that we've got available. Oh, so close, man. So close. Just want to get a little bit closer here with the mighty English Empire. British Empire, you bastard. Don't you forget the Scots. The Northern Irish. Well, at this point, just the Irish. In fact, yeah. Why did they decide to pop smoke without me saying anything? I'm guessing that they're all part of that same group there. Uh, let's push them this way. So, of course, trying to kind of cut the enemy off a bit if I can. Again, Diadem is doing his own thing, just getting closer. I'm going to do the same with the Argonaut, actually. Um... Yeah, let's detach him. And we're just going to have the Argonaut full speed ahead towards this location. Let's not forget that both of these guys um, do have torpedoes, which is incredible. I didn't realize that. Here we go. Come on, boys. Getting awfully close to the enemy. We Taking out these two German battleships would certainly make the Navy proud. Oh, just, just a hair away. We are still identifying, so 84%. We are actually now in range for sure to get some hits. Oh, that was awfully close. I think these guys are going to be getting hits very soon, guys. Really do believe so. Let's have that torpedo boat. Make sure... Nope, sorry, sorry. Make sure it is detached and have him go directly towards the enemy. This is ostensibly the fastest ship in the fleet, but for him to get there in time, I think is pretty unlikely. I like this. We're sort of covering, we're screening the entire area with ships, just making sure they don't escape. But right now, it looks like we're mostly using those frontal guns. Come on. Look at those guns they've got, man. Devastating. Don't like that. Oh, no. Oh, we got lucky. All right, let's make sure the Argonaut is getting some nice salvos here. I'm just going to turn him this way. Come on, son. There we go. Oh, okay. Well, unfortunately, I thought that was an explosion, but it wasn't. It's just the enemy firing at us. The Ostfriesland. Man, that's coming in way too close. Line up those guns, son. We might start firing pretty soon with the diadem. There we go. There's the volley. The diadem is certainly in range, but you know what? We'll just have him use his frontal guns for now. He's doing just fine. Let's have the Argonaut go directly towards the enemy. So we're trying to close in now, but it does look like they are speeding away as quickly as they can. I'm not sure we've tagged them a single time, to be honest with you. Oh, man, we are getting so close with those shots. So close. Just imagine getting a nice hit on the rudder right now. Be absolutely devastating to that ship. Two, three, four. Are we missing somebody? Yes, we are. These two bastards. I don't know what they're doing. Let's see how Medusa's doing in terms of range. Once again, she could start firing at this ship and potentially getting a hit. And look at that. The Ostfriedland has taken a hit, guys. We didn't see that, but he's absolutely taken some damage.
Look at that. And again, even though these are early times, it also means that the armor is not exactly up to par in every situation, that even our secondaries are scoring pretty good hits on that ship. It's going to get to a point with the diadem that if we time our approach correctly, uh, we'll be broadsiding them as they get over to this area here. Although we might just go ahead, turn, and start firing now. He's already in range of one of our best guns. There we go. Look at that, boys. Oh, so close. Keep going, keep going. Let's see if you guys have gotten this far in the video. If you have gotten this far in the video, I want you to put Edmund Fitzgerald down below in memory of the men lost on the Edmund Fitzgerald. Wow, we got lucky there. Maybe the men were watching us. Very lucky that we didn't get it to take a hit just then. I think it's about time to broadside. Fairly soon, anyway. Oh, man. Well, certainly the time for them to broadside. Let's just wait for that to pass, and then we'll turn. Oh, no, that was a direct hit, I think. Maybe not. I don't actually see the damage. I think we got extraordinarily lucky. But I am going to start turning now. Um, I'm also going to lower speed a bit. Just to make sure that these hits hopefully land on target. Come on, boys. All men firing. All men on deck firing, for goodness sakes. on. Man, we are so close. Obviously, the Germans do not want these battleships destroyed. Especially not this early on in the war. Diadem, there we go. Aggressive. Everything on aggressive. I want these men firing every gun they can, whenever they can. In fact, we're going to slow down even more here. I'm not even going to give our men breathing room if they don't get these hits. Oof! Take a look over here. It looks like at least one of these uh, light cruisers did manage to sort of uh, do a good job and go ahead and get ahead of the uh, of the battleship we've got here. In fact, we're going to turn them just a little bit just to make sure we cut them off. I don't think they can escape. The question is how long it takes for us to actually knock through this guy. Oh! See, some of those secondaries landed. I'm just not sure they, they made much damage, really. Keep firing. All right, we've already got um, this guy on lock. And I'm going to do the same, just aggressive fire. In other words, even if we're slightly out of range, they are still going to fire those guns. And they are riding so low in the water that I feel like 9 out of 10 of those shots should have hit. But they are just, it's almost like an ironclad here. Just so low in that water. And we don't exactly have the heaviest weaponry either. So damn close right there. Um, yeah, there's not much we can do with these guys. I think we should just go ahead and full full steam ahead towards the enemy, really. Uh, the diadem has done what he can. And actually, let's make sure the diadem is going at full speed. We 
reducers already back to full speed. Um, torpedo, I mean, again, I think our effective range of torpedo from what I could see here is, you know, basically a kilogram, uh, a, kil a kilogram, <laughs> sorry guys, it's late, a, a kilometer away. Um, but that doesn't seem likely that we're going to get that close. Let's go ahead and pop some smoke, just make ourselves a little harder to hit temporarily. And let's go ahead and go for full broadsides here. Nice. So lower to half. Lowest speed to half. It's awfully close. If we can get close enough to use those torps, we're golden. Let's go for it. Here's what we're going to do, guys. We are going to go ahead, go full flanking speed with the Medusa. Uh, the same with the torpedo boat, the Quail here. Well, pretty much all of our ships, we're just going to go full speed ahead uh, towards the enemy. If we've got to catch them with torpedoes, then so be it. Oh, that's very close to the Medusa. We're okay, though. And, of course, we'll be firing this entire time. Just getting a little closer to our target. Be back when we're in range. Alright guys, not quite in torpedo range, but we are certainly in range of the enemy. Getting too, getting close to this guy is a challenge. I'm actually going to put my torpedoes on aggressive once again. Um, as long as they see a good opportunity to fire, they will uh, on the Medusa there. But as you can see, the actual ship itself is taking on some water damage. Uh, it's already taken a hit. Not enough to... Um, destroy it of course but enough to slow it down a little bit um as you can see he's just not moving as quickly as he was before but we have gotten some serious hits on that battleship it's all about getting closer to this thing and just doing more and more and more damage as you can see those are some pretty nasty rounds um and as you can see the Ostfriesland is getting nice and red there uh but it's going to take a while before we get, get an actual kill shot here we've also got a torpedo boat the quail on the way too um, he is faster than that ship, but for him to catch up, it's going to actually take some time. And as you can see, uh, this is a really nice addition to the game. It lets us know like what's helping us move faster and what's hurting us. Even the crew training is actually slowing us down a little bit um, and, of course, messing with our shots. So I just think that's such an awesome addition to this game. Um, to have something like that actually matter is really, really cool. Well, we're still firing at that Ostfriesland. Um, I might just go ahead and give him a broadside and see what happens, but um, we have to keep trying to destroy this guy. With Diadem, I'm just going to go like this, and we are still focusing our fire there on that ship. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's like throwing pebbles at this guy. You know, we need to do better than that. Uh, it looks like he actually did significant damage just because I think... Um, it's not our rudder that's damaged, but the frontal um, part of the ship is full of water. And I think that's definitely causing some speed issues. Thankfully, our rudder is fine. Uh, but that's not looking great. I can actually do reverse. Don't need to, though. Let's just lower a little bit to full because these engines don't seem to be working so well. So let's do something like that. Should be easier for our ship to handle. Nice. I want him to completely turn here. There we go little bit of penetration it's actually over penetration uh, but it just goes to show you how this steel is not what we've seen in this game in the past 
This is some really thin steel right here. Um, just a decent hit, and it will go through. Might even over-penetrate it, as we've seen there a few times. There we go. Oh! Like an inch over the ship. Problem is those battleships actually have effective guns. We don't really. Um, we've got to land some some good hits, basically, for our guns to matter. Although the torpedo boat is getting awfully close, friends, and I mean awfully close. In fact, with the Medusa, I'm going to switch my fire over here to the Fleetolf. Let's do that number one, and let's keep that torpedo boat closer and closer to the enemy. Uh, in fact, we could even start bringing the Diadem in, although I like the trajectory he has right here, so I'm just going to switch his fire to the Fleetolf. Hopefully we get a little bit luckier against him. He's got some nasty guns. Oh, yeah. Oh, just barely getting there, but we will get there in time. Oh, my goodness, guys. We are getting way, way close with this uh, torpedo boat. Just going to keep trying to cut the enemy off. We actually want to get kind of ahead of them. I don't want the Medusa to ruin anything here. But you know what? The Medusa could also fire her torpedoes if the enemy were to get a bit closer. Oh, baby. That's a hit. That's a hit. That is partial hit. <laughs> Though we're getting closer, that's for sure, guys. And pretty soon I will turn this quail to fire the torps. And hopefully that's the kill shot we need here. In fact, we can start turning the quail right now. Oh! Don't shoot at the quail! Don't shoot at the quail! It's actually shooting at the diadem. And I think the Amphitrite is still firing at um, the Ostfriesland, but we want to focus on the Breitolf here. Just try and overwhelm him with shots. Might even affect his ability to spot us, believe it or not. There's so many other modifiers in this game, it wouldn't surprise me. Oh boys, we are getting into range here. Please, Quail, don't screw this up. Don't screw this up, Quail. Gosh, you can even hear the ships. That's amazing. Here we go, guys. And he's also taking hits um, as all this is happening. Let's hope the Quail fires those torps. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I know it's auto-fire. I'm pretty sure it's auto-fired. Oh, I think that's a drop. I think that's a torpedo. I think it is, boys. I think it is. Question is, how many of these do we have? And we probably have some on the port side. We just fired the starboard side torps. But I wonder if we have additional torps on the port side. Come on, baby. Oh, that's way too close for comfort. Come on, come on, come on. Is that going to be a hit? Baby, there we go, guys. Flooding. Although it doesn't seem to be significant damage. Well, it's significant damage, but not enough to send this ship down to Davy Jones' locker. Let's put it that way. Uh, and again, I'm not sure he's got an additional torpedo. I think he's just got uh, one on each side, or maybe just one. So we're going to turn the quail around. In fact, I think there's a way to do this with the auto rudder, isn't there? To just kind of force him. Yeah, we can do this. This is a pretty crazy approach, but I'm going to make it work. In fact, we want to do it the other way, I believe. Right rudder. Here we go, my friends. Trying to make this work. And actually, he is flooding pretty quickly. Look at that flooding on the bottom. 
Unbelievable. Oh! All right, boys. Now, he's also got some torpedoes here, the Medusa. Um, however, I'm not sure there's any good time to fire these torps. Pretty much only if the enemy gets right up next to us. But it looks like the actual flooding damage he took there is going to be enough to sink this bastard. Here we go, brothers. Brothers and sisters. The quail is going for another shot, I believe. Not sure he should go for the kill shot here on the Fritjof. Maybe he should actually wait and fire on the Ostfriesland. Um, but I'm not sure that is going to happen. In fact, I'm not even sure he still has an additional torpedo. Um, he might just have had that one. I'm guessing he has one on the port side and one on the starboard side, but that may be incorrect. Oh, he missed! Enemy actually missed that one. Keep firing, keep firing, and we just have a small fire there in what looks like maybe the galley of the ship. Right, there we go it's on aggressive this is just making sure we don't have that extra torque because he would certainly use it um if he still had one i don't like that rudder damaged help out your brother come on medusa yeah, medusa i think is full stopped with that damage man which is am just amazes me really Thankfully, those light cruisers are finally coming in useful. Uh, I'm just going to turn them ahead of the enemy ships. We might as well bring the Diadem back, as well as the Amphitrites. It seems like just a few good shots should send this guy down right away. And at this point, I will actually put this ship on autopilot, the uh, torpedo boat. Oh, yeah, torpedo boat is looking pretty worse for wear. So I'm going to put him on autopilot. And I think he's just probably going to try to escape from here quickly. They are slowly but surely trying to fix that, um, that water damage, which is why we need to get some pretty good hits here soon. There we go. Two overpenetrating hits, one causing a major fire. But that's on our ship, damn it. <laughs> Not on their ship. All right, we're going to focus our fire on the Ostfriesland anyway, but in the meantime, I'm taking away AI control, and I'll do it myself. I'm just running away from this battle quickly. Oh, boy. Oh, my goodness. The fact that the quail has withstood that is unbelievable. No, he's going down, of course. A flash fire. Look at that, guys. How horrifying is that? We're going to watch that for sure. I think I'm going to let my sinking crew down. Sinking gang, I should say. No way. Uh, although, hopefully we can avenge that ship with some well-placed shots. Put a huge hole in the Fritjof, so obviously the Fritjof crew was pretty annoyed at us. Let's get some effective shots, boys. Yeah, he's already in the process of turning. It's just going to take a little, little longer than we'd like. And actually, this guy's a bit closer to us, the Ostfriesland. So just with one of our ships, I am going to target the Ostfriesland. We're not going to forget about the Fritjof, though. But he is absolutely pumping out all that water. You know, he was so close to sinking there with that massive gaping hole in his ship. Now things seem to have turned around just a little bit. Let me make sure that this guy is his own agent. There we go, Medusa. Nice. Cassandra. We're also going to just go straight towards him. Yeah. 
going to focus on the Ostfriesland now. You know, as they rotate out um, and these this other ship gets a little bit closer, I think it's just incumbent upon us to go ahead and focus on the ship that is presenting the best target. In this case, it's going to be the Ostfriesland. Get him, boys. I wish you could have your men overestimate target every time, because they're just like a centimeter off from a good hit. Let's take a look over here at the light cruiser. All right, he's getting close enough to do some damage here to Fritjof, uh, but I'd love to get there in torpedo range, and actually he is going directly towards us, guys, which means that we'll almost certainly be in torpedo range here. Actually increase speed a bit. Oh, look at this. This is a chance, an opportunity you don't get often. I'm gonna actually go ahead and pop smoke with the Cassandra. And we are going to focus fire on the Ostfriedland here. Particularly because I want to try and get the torpedo shot. I will slow down here as we get closer. Come on, come on. Let's get into torpedo range. Man, we are close. Going as fast as I can, guys. And I've got everything on aggressive here. Cassandra crew, you can do this. You're so close to victory, boys. We might actually need to turn into him because look at that. The AI is smart enough to start turning away. I think they know that we've got um, a nice baby in the hatch here. <laughs> what a terrible analogy. But yeah, I think they know exactly what we're going for here. I'm going to make sure we're ahead of them. I, I would hope that the AI would wait until we're ahead of them. Then again, awfully close here. Come on, come on. We will just simply follow him if we need to. Get closer and closer each time. Look at that. This one has already taken some nasty, nasty shots. The Fritjolf. You know what? We're going to focus fire on the Fritjof because if we have tubes of torpedo tubes, we can absolutely fire them now. Half speed. Fire. Actually, we've got some engine damage here. And I'm not sure those torps even fired, but we've got additional ships closing in here. To finish the battleships off. Come on. Focus fire on the Ostfriesland. Man, the Cassandra is completely just going crazy here. It's all the ballast because of the water coming in here in the bottom. It's amazing how much that can change the ship itself. Fire, fire, fire. The men don't know what to fire at. Alright, we've got the Argonaut, guys. The Argonaut also has torpedoes. Uh, and so does the Perseus. We need him out of the way. Come on, Perseus. Oh, he ended up hitting his own ship, the Cassandra. Careful, you bastard. I will admit, it's a confusing situation. Nonetheless, gotta be careful. There we go. And actually, he just ended up hitting his own ship as well, the Fritjof. So, you know what? The enemy just made a similar um, mistake. Victory must be ours. It must be ours. Come on, Perseus. Let's see if you got any twerps off.
Fire those damn torps. I'm not sure why it's not auto-firing the torps. Aggressive. Friesland is actually still doing pretty good, all things considered. We've also got some torps here on the Argonaut. Let's hope that he can fire his. Might have a better trajectory. And there's actually a torpedo. So somebody did fire a torp, but I suspect it was actually the Ostfriesland that fired it. Let's make sure the Perseus remains in range here. And I think we've nearly got these ships destroyed. Look at that. It looks like the enemy's already asking to end battle. Not likely. Not yet. And there we go. A torpedo did hit from the Argonaut right in the back of the ship of all places. Engine 1 is damaged. Not good. Not good. Keep firing. Keep firing. Friesland is looking pretty bad, um, but it looks like we're going to end up crashing into the Fritjof. Oh my goodness, guys, look at this. Look at this madness. It's like a Hollywood movie. Here we go. Brace for impact. Oh, oh, is he going to get out of the way just in time? Boom! <laughs> so we actually did get a ram there. Nice. Again, not the most tactically sound approach. Fritjof is continuing to take that flooding, but he is taking the damage well, I must say. We've got a fire here in the Osfriesland. It seems like right now the fire may be more deadly than the flooding um, because they managed to get enough pumps uh, to start to start getting that water out. We've got to stop that for sure. Argonaut is looking terrible right now. In fact, he's about to sink. Uh, let's give AI control here to the Argonaut. Hopefully he can be saved. Destroyed their funnel. Not bad. Start bringing the Amphitrites closer. Perseus just took a vicious hit. Absolutely devastating. Well, let's hope that Frithjolf's days are numbered here. is just completely dead in the water. I'd like to try and at least turn him this way so that he could still be a danger to Ostfriesland. But as you can see, the flooding has reached critical levels there. Just to avoid friendly fire, I'm switching targets here. And actually, Ostfriesland presents itself as a pretty good target right now. Look at that. And just with the very lackluster, uh, sec yeah, very lackluster, um, you know, second-rate guns, we're still piercing that armor. So just imagine if we could upgrade these guns during the campaign. Man, we would wipe these ships off the damn map. I mean, just put massive holes in them. We saw what the torpedoes did, and we can try to replicate that with uh, some heavy cannons. Oh, devastating! Bloody hell. Well, 
We'll say also another thing I've noticed, our ships, even without the rudder being hit, they are so prone um, to being um, slowed down. So with the research, we could, of course, combat that uh, and make it a little more difficult to slow our ships down. It seems that ballast really screws them up. If there's even just a little bit of water in there, it's going to cause massive problems. Whereas the other ships, as you can see, they could be almost full of water uh, and still operate just fine. Like, the Britjolf is pretty much, you know, got water all over the bottom deck here, but they've managed to close a lot of these holes, um, which makes things a lot better for them. Cassandra, come on. Might as well pop smoke. Don't think they're going to have difficulty finding out where we are, though. <laughs> Miss. Nice. Argonaut. Fire. Okay. We actually popped Twerps. He's turning, though. He is turning. Popping torps from all sides. I think he'll manage to get out of the way. Maybe not. Maybe not, folks. Oh, baby. Yeah, that's a pretty nasty hit. And finally, the Fritjolf goes straight down to Davy Jones' locker, boys. Gotta try and do the same thing over here. Get into torpedo range and destroy the Ostfriesland. Finally got a decent twerp off and hitting it right there in the back of the ship as he tried to turn. What a beautiful thing. Poor Perseus. He is taking on a lot of damage there. And he actually can suffer from rudder problems because the rudder is essentially flooded on his ship. Although I suspect the same is true with the Ostfriesland here. Yep, rudder is flooded on the Ostfriesland. Just a duck in the water, guys. It's that simple. So we're just going to get closer and closer and overwhelm them with time. Let's just do this. Make sure that we are going all towards uh, the enemy here. And I believe the battle should be over pretty soon. I really am loving this campaign setup. But of course, it has... You know, it, it's in its infancy. There's a lot of things that still need to be done. We don't currently have a way of moving ships around from what I can see. Uh, we just kind of move them from port to port. And eventually, they get into conflict with uh, one of the enemies in the Irish Sea or um, in the uh, English Channel, etc. Uh, while that's all well and good, I would love to see something a little bit more detailed. And I'm pretty sure that with time, they're going to give us that. But awesome so far. Yep, we're still firing away at that battleship. <laughs> Remember, this is the birth of battleships, so um, this is quite a behemoth we're dealing with here. Does look like flooding is quickly becoming a problem, though. And there we go. I think Ostfried's line, you can see that water going down and down and down. Once that blue reaches the bottom, uh, then, of course, the entire ship is flooded. Keep on firing, boys. Keep on firing. Doing his best to get away, though. Oh. It's not letting us select. There we go. This is the luckiest ship in the fleet, my goodness. Seeing some ricochet hits right now. Uh, there we go. There we go. A little more over-penetration. 
That just sounds wrong, doesn't it? Doesn't it? <laughs> Make sure the diadem has got a good old-fashioned uh, lock on the enemy, and he does indeed. Just need to throw some more water there in the middle of the ship, and I think she's going to go right down. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to cut him off. Uh, we'll kind of just try and head ahead of him. There we go. And with the Perseus, uh, I'm just going to turn this way a bit. Focus my guns on him entirely. Hopefully, be, hopefully the Perseus will be the one to kill him for sure. Come on, son. Oh, boy. I'm just going to stop him right there. I'm just going to stop the Perseus. His only task is to fire in the back of that ship. And again, in large part due to crew training, um, and of course the enemy's hull stability, we can't seem to pen all the time. We are getting some penetrating hits, but I don't think it's actually coming from this ship. I think it's coming from these guys over here, on the right side. Nonetheless, Diadem is closing in. It's almost like it takes a torpedo to knock these guys down. Without a torp, um, we could be here hours firing at this thing. Alright, I guess we'll just get a little bit closer. Um, we'll do the same here with this guy. Perseus, although he's taking quite a bit of damage. Make sure the Argonaut is uh, absolutely pursuing as well. There we go. Destroyed the tower, but did nothing to the bottom decks. That's where we need the damage to go. Man, still got some nasty guns too. Let's turn again, guys. We're just going to turn all the way there. Hey, we got a fire going. Always like to see a fire. That's absolutely promising. And we also managed to damage the engine there. Uh, I'm liking these, fire these shots from the back. Definitely is managing to do some damage to the enemy. Let's just hope that it's fatal. Please set off an explosion. Please, please, please. Our men have suffered enough chasing this damn ship. And yeah, the fire is raging throughout the ship there. Let's actually switch to um, high explosive rounds. And the flooding is growing as well, guys. Look at those bottom decks. Flooding is starting to grow. I love it. I'm actually going to lower speed there. Let's hope that we finally manage to damage this guy beyond return. Now, if they have those watertight doors, they can pretty much stop the flooding there. But I see additional flooding beginning. As you can see, they're in the front of the ship. You know, this game is like a work of art when you see stuff like that. And look at that additional flooding. Even more additional flooding, guys. Let's hope that this is it. We finally got the Ostreslan. Luckily, she did not require um, a torpedo to sink her, but my goodness, we've been chasing this girl for ages. Down she goes.
An amazing, amazing fight, though. And there we go, guys. We get to see the end of the battle. And I wonder how that contributes to the campaign. So we actually have victory points. Of course, we had way more victory points than they did. I'd like to see a more even battle. Although that was fascinating. So that just, um, of course is part of the end of the turn. We also seem to automatically lose transport ships, and I believe over here we can actually attack an additional enemy group. But once again, it doesn't seem like we get the option of like moving our convoys outside to attack the enemy um, or anything like that. It's, it's pretty much like, you know, we just order ships to move from port to port, and occasionally they will uh, come up across some mission uh, to do, of course. And this one looks like an interesting one, without a doubt. Nonetheless, guys, I hope you enjoyed that first look gameplay at this particular campaign part of Ultimate General Dreadnoughts, or to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, excuse me. I really, really hope that you guys will hit that like button and comment down below, because I want to play this game again. Take care, my friends. See you on the next one.